Welcome back to Uroru Niwa. My name is Mike Charlton, and if you remember from last time, we had just created a character. We are in, and I have completely forgotten where we are, uh, which is just as well because we can find out if you press capital Q, I believe. It gives you a nice little map. What you'll see here is that we are in the fortress on the left hand side. Here's the map. We're in the fortress of Noring Constructs, which is in the area called the Beak of Sorcery. Uh, you didn't see it on, on camera, but uh, when I looked at the history, the Beak of Sorcery is actually where the dragon Usma hot treasures, the dragon came from, that uh, burnt down Fensrelit. Uh, and in fact, I can move the cursor up here, and you can see there's where Furnace Tapered is. And here we have a fence relief, which is where we're going to. There's another one up here called Cave Sacks. Oh, we should have started in Cave Sacks, because that came up numerous times, but that's fine. And then here we can see there's there's where Pulley Rooters is. So it's all on our map. Um, everything we want to do is on our map. You'll see on the right hand side that we have we have some events that have actually happened. And in fact, if you press plus and minus to scroll these up and down, you can see there's an expedition leader. So there's somebody who's actually trying to reclaim a site. Now, it would be very interesting if they're actually trying to reclaim pulley rooters. I don't know, because there's a few, you can see there's actually a few ruins here, Weist Glove, Head Glaze, and then there's pulley rooters. So it'd be interesting to see where this guy is. We've highlighted it. So Z recenters on selected. So you see it's 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 not highlighted. So I can't actually choose that, which is what I want, because it would tell me where that expedition leader is. Ah, here we go. Reclaiming the exalted sh uh, shield in hammer. There we go. So they're reclaiming, they're reclaiming, or have reclaimed it appears, hammer shakes. Okay, so that might be what that is uh, all about there. So there is the beast, uh, Uzma Hot Treasure, Gold of Guilt. This is the one that burnt down Fence Relief. Uh, it, again, it doesn't tell us where she is or where he is. I think it's the he. But you can see these are all things that we are kind of familiar with. There's some more beasts here as well. I forget which one. So for instance, I think Eddie was an Etten, if I remember correctly, because this is, I think, the Twilight of Cobalt. You can't actually see it, unfortunately. And there's some groups here as well that we know about. There's some abductions um, and we can ask people about these events so that may be something we can do at some point. Next we can look at, um, if you press A you can see agreements. We have no agreements with anybody at the moment so that comes in later. These are all the people that we know. So we actually know everybody in the place where we, we start and the place we start is called Knowing Constructs. So we know everybody in Knowing Constructs. Anyway there's all these people. So. I don't really care at the moment. And there's other things you can do. You can look at different sites. So if we wanted to find out, for instance, where a certain site is, we can do so, or if we want to get some information about it. So I can actually, again, I can use F to filter. So if we want to filter for a fence relief, which is here, you can see it's a hillock, um, and we can toggle the map, M toggles the map. So now I need to Z to go to center on it. These are the groups we know about. We actually know about Exalted Shield, which is our civilization. And we know about the Oil of Contests, Contests, which is the site government of the Knowing Constructs. There are also regions. So we actually are in certain regions and we know about, we know about other regions. So if I go back to the map again, because if I move the cursor around, you can see that we started in the Beaks of Sorcery. And if I go, if I actually go plus, 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 plus to the Beaks of Sorcery, again, toggling the map, we can see what kind of region it is, and it's, it's mountainous. Um, as we go here, we can see this, all the Beaks of Sorcery in here. Then there's, on this road here, it's actually the National Desert. Let me just filter for it. Again, we, it's a, it's a Badlands. And then when, you, when you're filtering, you just press F again and then backspace to get everything back again. And press return and back onto the map again. And then once we get here, it's the fortuitous fort forest. It wasn't that fortuitous though, was it? It got burnt down by a, by a dragon. So the fortuitous forest here. And then we see, and it's a temperate coniferous forest. Uh, and so it just gives us a little bit of information. But the other thing that we can do is if we press B for beasts, is that we can actually look at uh, what kind of beasts are in different regions that we know about. Uh, and so you can see here we've got uh, worker ants, soldier ants, but we don't really care about 
pub up pants and things like that. But we might want to think, for instance, like chinchilla women might give us a problem. And you can see this creature lives in the beak of sor sorcery. There's chinchilla men, there's, there's chinchilla men, there's coyotes. This is in the prestigious desert, so if we want to avoid coyotes, we probably want to avoid the prestigious desert. Uh, there's uh, damselflies I don't care about. Dingoes as well can be quite dangerous, so they're in the prestigious desert. Uh, there act there's goblins in the known constructs. So there's goblins in our fortress. Interesting. Honey badgers are actually quite dangerous, uh, and they're in the prestigious desert as well, so we might want to avoid that. Jaguars, again the prestigious desert, so we're going to avoid that. Yeah, it doesn't look too bad, really. There's yetis in the beak of sorry sorcery as well. They can be quite dangerous, I think. So um, that gives you just kind of an idea of um, of what we might uh, encounter, but we don't know that much about all of the different. Um, regions. We actually have to ask people about those regions. So I've gone back to the map again. Now, where are we is the, is the question. And I always cannot see myself. And there you see this little ampersand. And that is the kind of traditional mark for a roguelike. And that's where I am. I wish it highlighted it because I lose myself all the time. Now it centers the screen on your character all the time. So if you're good at finding the center of your screen, which somehow I'm, I'm not good at, then it should be no problem. Now, if I want to look around, I can press L, and that allows me to actually look around. Now, you can use the number pad. I, I recommend you using the number pad. I've actually um, rebound some of my keystrokes so I can use uh, VI keys, which is what I prefer. So here we can see these little omegas are statues. So in the in our other map, the omegas were, were fortresses, but in this map, these omegas are statues. All right. Um, and you can see there's there's quite a few statues. You can actually look at them. If I actually uh, press B here to say I'm going to look at this siltstone statue of dwarves, it uh, tells me that it's 150. This little mark here is a weight measure. I don't know what this corresponds to. I think it's probably close to a pound. Um, it's called uh, it's called a urist or a urist. And then if we press B, we can see the description. And this is. Uh, siltstone statue of dwarves. The item is an image of dwarves in siltstone, which is not very exciting. They can be actually quite interesting statues that tell the history of certain things, so they're quite fun to look at sometimes, but it doesn't look like there's some any interesting statues here. Here's a bobcat. Here's a heron. Uh, some dwarves. So over here we can see this is actually a clothier's shop. Ah, so this is all places where they make clothes, and so we seem to have started up in the middle of a clothing factory. So let's move around. Again, you just use the numeric keypad and in just, if you experiment, you'll figure it out. So I'm going to use my VI keys. I use Alt, Alt, sorry, this is Alt H for instance, so in my keystrokes. Uh, and we can we can walk around this fortress. Now what, what most people tend to do is they try to actually get out of the fortress as quickly as humanly possible because fortresses are very confusing and like the, the Human generated fortresses usually aren't so confusing, but uh, the ones in uh, that the computer makes can be quite confusing. So again, let's let's look. This this is a uh, metalsmith forge. I think these are probably going to all be metalsmith forges. Yeah, and then there's um, some nice statues of sheep and things. Probably not interesting sheep. One of the things you'll notice here is this character, if you've played the game before, you probably will never have seen before, because I actually drew that character. Um, that is actually should be a down arrow, but I actually made it a small up arrow, which I will explain later. So we're just going to wander along. Um, and this is why having good memory is nice, because we won't forget where we were. And again, this looks like more clothing shops. Oh, these are, these are workshops. These are O things. If we look at them, you'll see this is actually just a pillar. Sometimes there's engravings and stuff on pillars, but um, there's nothing interesting on these. The little plus signs are, are floors. These are actually polished floors. Unpolished floors look different. Uh, and the little plus signs here are doors. And actually we can even look at the door. This is a siltstone door. So it's not really all that interesting. The, one of the things that's again frustrating about this game is that you'll wander along in the porch and it's like, where is everybody? Why aren't they working in, for instance, the jeweler's workshop? And you know, the game just hasn't implemented that properly, essentially. And there are a lot of there's a lot of placeholders in this game. So there's a lot of stuff that's just just downright boring. And you just wander around and you're like, what am I doing? And this looks like some metal uh, some uh, leather works, okay. The layout of this of this uh, is not 
as horrible as it normally is, I have to say. What's this? Oh, these are tanner shops. Interesting. But again, they're all slacking, they're not doing anything. You don't ever need that many tanner shops. So now this is, this is an upward stairway. And I think I am actually going to make my way up, because this is kind of workshop layer. And I, I want to see if I can find somebody to talk to. Ah, see that little exclamation mark? That's noise. So that means there's some disturbance over there, which means there's somebody up there. That means we can go talk to them. And they are fast. I don't know what they're doing. Oops, there's a bedroom there. Um, you can actually see in the bedroom here, there's a cabinet. We can look inside the cabinet and you can see there's actually lots of stuff inside the cabinet. Now, uh, Dwarvish culture is such that it's very communal. And so that even if you have these things, you can take them and no one cares. I'm going to look at this naked mole uh, dog leather helm and you can see it has little carrots on the side. That means it's been decorated so it'll be an interesting thing to look at. So if I see V for description and this is, I'm looking at the model I have to press enter to look at the helm and then V and you can see this is a naked mole dog leather helm. It is decorated with jaguar bone. The object menaces with spikes of pyrolusite. On the item is an image of dwarf in blue garnet. So that's pretty cool actually. I mean, that's actually pretty cool. I wonder what I have. If I press, if I press, escape gets you out of all the menus. If I press I, that gives me my inventory. And you can see I have the copper battle axe that I was hoping for. I have a bismuth bronze shield, rat leather trousers. I have pigtail dress. Pigtail is not actually a pig's tail. Pigtail is a type of cloth in this world. Uh, we have a black bear leather robe. Uh, we have a cave spider silk cap. We have some pigtail gloves. We have some socks and we have some shoes. We have a water skin with water in it. And we have black bullhead, which is a type of fish, I think. Um, and, and we have five of those in our backpack. And we have a large copper dagger. And I think that's all we have. So I'm not going to actually raid supplies at the moment. I, I really just want to talk with people for a bit. Oops, here's another bedroom. Let's see if we can't actually find that person. It may be, oh, there, there he is, oh, it's, it's a human. I think that's the guy we were, oh, it's a bard. Iskak Namunkakadist. So if I press K, K means interact with someone. I don't know why it's K. Maybe, okay? <laughs> K, anyway, you, begin a, you can begin a performance if you want to perform, do some kind of performance. You can shout to everybody, you can talk with our deity, and, or we can actually talk with this guy. And to talk with the guy, what you do is you just position the cursor over them, and then you press enter. So we want to talk with this guy. And the first thing we want to do is say hello, so you greet listener. Now, on the bottom, it gives you a list of the conversation so far. Now, this is a real pain in the ass, I have to say. So what you do is you press K again, you hit ongoing conversation with the bard, and then we can do things. Now, one of the things I wanted to do is I actually wanted to ask, I'm gonna press escape here, because I'm gonna go back into Q, and I wanted to actually ask about this guy, Eshtan Roughnuts, because I'm actually a little bit interested in what he is doing. So I'm gonna try and find out what he's doing. Unfortunately, Ishkak is running away from us, so we may not get a chance to talk with him very much. So I'm going to ask about somebody, and hopefully we'll be able to ask about... Ah, yes, there we go. Eshten Roughnuts. We can ask about him. You can't ask about everything. That's one of the things in this game that's very frustrating. You can ask about certain things that you know about, and only in ways that you know in certain ways. And some of the things in that list of events, usually you can ask about those. And so I knew it's in that event, so probably I can ask about it. So I'm going to ask about Eshten Roughnuts, and what the heck is he doing? So he's a Baron Consort of Helpbridge. I wonder where Help Bridge is. So we can actually do, we might be able to ask for direction. Now you can actually filter, but it's not useful. This is one of the things that's really frustrating. You can only filter for keywords. And so it's not actually that useful. So if I actually search for help bridge, I think it does not work. That's oh, right. Here's one, you don't have to press F to go to filter. This frustrates me because <laughs> it's not the way it works in other places. So if I look for help bridge, the problematic hell. I don't think I want to go to the problematic hell, to be honest. I wonder if that's a pub. The uh, help bridge. So you can see I can't actually search for help bridge. You can only search for for certain things. 
and again it's very frustrating that's actually interesting though I just noticed that we can search for the whereabouts of the dragon Uzma hot treasures I am actually curious to know where he is because I don't really want to so the branded furnace is in the beak of sorcery so he's in the brandis branded furnace so that's that's his lair and it's in the beak of sorcery so we need to be careful because it is around here somewhere now he's taken off we can't talk to him any longer so that guy is the baron of help bridge and i if i go into queue here i'm if i go to sites here i can probably find it so i'm going to filter again help bridges yeah help bridges there so again press return plus 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 minus and then I need to again Z to filter. So that's where Helpbridge is way down there. So I think it's very likely if you see that there's these ruins down here as well, that that's probably where he's going to, like Lancer ch Chasms or something like that. Um, so, all right, so let us, if we follow this guy, um, he may actually lead us out. <laughs> so I think I may do that. No, where's he gone? Okay. How on earth did he do that? He's disappeared. He's. I wonder if they can walk through. Look, there, look he's back again. <laughs> Blimey, he's fast. Now the thing is, we can actually go faster. If we press capital S, we can actually we can actually run. So we can maybe take. <laughs> we can we can catch up to him. But again, he's uh, he's he has uh, disappeared on us. There he is. But yeah, so I guess he's not leaving anytime soon. So let's uh, let's go back to let's go back to a walk because we might get too tired. So this is a downstairs. We don't really want the downstairs unless there's no other upstairs up here. Ah, you can see there's lots of people up there. I don't know if we can actually get there. If we go down here, we might be able to go up again. Ah, as you can see, we have to go down twice. So that's, these fortresses are really confusing. Ah, and we've made it to a storeroom. Now look at all the goblins in the storeroom. Okay, now the storerooms are interesting because this is, you, you'll notice there are dollar signs on all of the items. That means that you can't just take them, they're, they're for sale. But the problem is, is that when you're in a storeroom, there are no salespeople. So you can't actually buy anything in a storeroom. So if we just, actually, I'm just gonna get into this room. And, whoa. You, you notice these goblins here, these Gs. You notice they're flashing. And the reason they're flashing is because they're injured. So that means there's been some fighting here. I, I wonder if these are not native goblins. <laughs> Um, so let's have a look at this guy. If we just press A, and you'll notice on the right-hand side, you, so it gives us his inventory. You'll notice on the right-hand side, it gives us his status. And you'll see that, in fact, um, anything that's white is fine. Uh, yellow means that there is some damage. Blue means that I think there is an infection. Um, so he's, he's got an infected pancreas. Uh, and then red means that there's some good, that it has some really good damage. So if I look at his description, press pressing D, um, it will give us more. So he's got his right lower leg is cut open, his right lower leg is bruised, his left upper arm, arm is cut open, uh, it's bruised, uh, he's lots of bruises, uh, very many bruises, his pancreas is bruised, his left shoulder is bruised. So um, yeah, so he's not in good shape. And we don't actually know what's happened here. So I may actually just look at, um, may look at this other goblin as well. So again, he's he's again he's not in good shape. So we look at the description. So his lower back teeth are gone. Um, his head is bruised. His upper arm is cut open, but mostly just bruising. So oh, his lip is mangled beyond recognition. So basically, they've been brawling. Somebody's been brawling, and maybe just these two have been brawling for some reason. And in fact, you see this little two here. Oh, hold on again. Look again. This little two here. So you can see here it says we have dust and gossips. Ukebor's lower left back tooth here. <laughs> so, so he's lost. That's where he's lost his tooth. And so, I wonder if those guys were just fighting each other for some unknown reason. Let's just, we'll just. If I press dot, 
Then we'll wait for a bit. We'll see. Okay, not half an hour. Not half an hour ago, I attacked me. <laughs> you know, you only have yourself to blame. If you have this this thing with this background here, that means you saw a goblin there at one point. The G's. The G's are goblins. These little happy faces are dwarves, and the G's are goblins. The rest of the stuff is is crap. I'm not going to really go through it because there's lots of stuff here, um, and I'm not going to tell you what all of these things mean because it's just it's just uh, too much taking at once. Uh, but I think I'm just going to let these guys uh, duke it out. I don't really care. Yeah, it looks like they had a uh, an argument of some sort. So that does happen. It even happens in your in, in fortress mode. Just keep that in mind. So here's another storeroom. And, oh, you can see, in fact, maybe that's the guy. This is a, the bone doctor. <laughs> the bone doctor is injured. And in fact, boy, they, they really had a hard time here. What's, what's his? So he's bruised up. This is a furniture storeroom. Again, I'm not going to. I'm not going to to hang around here because the the storerooms are are not actually that that interesting. This looks like a food storeroom. I will show you where you can buy things because um, we will come across it at some point. Ah, right, here we go. Here's stairs up so we can get out of this hell. Yeah, we can see there's some characters up there, but I may just take the opportunity. I'm not going to talk with that guy. I'm just going to move up um, a level. And you see that little um, sort of scent sign there? That's actually a hatch cover. So um, that's it, it can be quite useful to do in your own fortresses if you have a stairway and you want to, you want to protect it, uh, lock it for some reason. Um, so all we're trying to do here is we want to get up. We're, we're trying to find a way out of here, and this is a down stairwell. We could go down again just to, to look, but I don't think that's going to get us where we want to go, perhaps. Again, one of the frustrating things about this game is this kind of endlessly trying to get out of the mountain homes or, or get out of the fortress. So, if I were wanting to stay in this place, it's not so bad because, because it's nice to actually know. There's a there's a horse down there. So these D's are dogs. Uh, and there and there I think is a horse. Yes, there's a muscular horse in the middle of the fortress for some reason. Oh you're the champion. Hello Mono the champion. Let's why don't we say hello? Not really interested in uh, talking to us it seems. Ah, not one hour ago, a goblin attacked a dwarf. So basically, they don't want to talk to anybody. But that's interesting about the about the goblin attacking dwarf because we we saw the aftermath of that. Um, I'm not quite sure what was going on there. Um, we could investigate to a certain degree. Here's kind of a pit here. You can see actually that this is just empty space here in the middle. And again, there's a there's a hatch cover here. Um, really, I want to go up, and this is going to be going down. Um, it doesn't go anywhere actually. All right, but sometimes it's good to. There's so many goblins in here. The fortresses is, have become very multi multiracial in the latest versions, which is which is very good for multiculturalism. Um, so I can go down. I can't go up. Um, Walking through here, you can see actually that it's very slow because I'm on the ground. Once you have to pass through like a lot of people, like you get shoved over and, and then you start crawling under people. What are these capital C's here? Ah, we've got camels. Lots of camels inside the fortress. I was not expecting that. And I have to find a place where no one's standing before I can stand up. So S to stand up again. And that lets me go faster. Ah, we have found an up ramp and this is this is kind of a feature of, I'm on the ground again. Uh, I've discovered an expansive deep cavern. So if we actually go down here, the uh, we'll get into the cavern system, which I don't actually want to do. If we go up from here, we'll get out. So, and I will show you in a minute once I actually find a place where I can get off the ground. Oh, there we go. So here you can see there's an upward slope and here you can see there's a downward slope. And, and 
I'm going to kind of explain to you what I what I was doing. Um, in the upward slope, this is the original glyph, the kind of up triangle. The big C is a camel. And the other glyph there is is kind of a small up arrow that I drew for my for this font. Uh, and because I find it easier to understand, in the original thing, this would be a down downward facing triangle. And, but what I find confusing about ramps is that in this upside, this is actually a ramp. This is this is if I stand it, I'm standing on a ramp. But this is not actually a downward ramp. It's not actually a slope. In this space is actually empty space, despite what the game is telling you here. Right? There's actually empty space. And if I look, and I'm looking right now, I can actually go down. You can see there's an up air, an up slope here. So I can actually, if I go down here, then I'm standing on the up slope. So when you walk on this space, you're actually walking into empty space, and then you fall onto the up ramp. Now it's not very fall, far because it's an, up, it's an up ramp, so you can fall with no problem. Whereas if you walk here, you're actually standing on the up ramp. And that's actually why I made this uh, font the way it is. It's to tell me that there is nothing here and that there is an up ramp below it. And that's why I made it a little bit smaller to show you that the, below here, there, there's an up ramp. And that for me is a lot clearer as to what's happening here. There is not a down ramp here. There is an up ramp here. There's an up ramp here as well, but it's one level below. And that's that's that for me that's crucial for understanding how these these ramps work now you'll see on the right hand side that there is some more maps and this is you can see down arrow one this is one level down so this is what's directly beneath beneath me so i'm standing here so directly beneath me centered here is this and so you can see that's corresponding to here what's below here and this is what's above me. And you can see that above me, there. this is the up ramp here. That's that up ramp. And then there's an up ramp to its north. And this is crucial for understanding how to navigate out of this place. Because if you don't understand how that works, you will not figure it out. So I'm just gonna walk here. I'm gonna stand now on this up ramp. So I'm standing on this up ramp, which above me is this space here right and so to the north there's another up ramp above and so even though here if i look here that's a pillar but if i want to go up to the next level i actually walk towards that pillar and i'm going to walk up the up ramp to get to this up ramp and if i wanted to go down i would go south towards this here which will then end up in this ramp here Right? And then I can continue going down if I want, or if I go towards the pillar, I'll go up. And what they've done to make it easier to, to navigate is that, what, generally speaking, in order to go up, the way you want to walk is towards the pillar. So the way these fortresses are built is they have these ramps, which are hard to navigate. But if you want to go up, you walk towards the pillar. And if you want to verify that that's what you want to do, you can see here, here's where I'm standing, this is where I want to go, which is to the north. And so you can look above in the cases where it doesn't work. I'm going to stop looking and I'm going to walk towards the pillar and that'll make me go up. Right? So I walk towards the pillar, that made me go up. And again, you can see below, this is where we were. Above, there we have this other thing. So I'm going to go again. I'm standing here. I want to be here, so I have to go north. Right? And we can continue going up the tower. Uh, you can see I'm standing here, so if I wanted to continue going up, I would just go to the right. But instead, I've noticed that we have exited. I think this is correct. Let's have a look. Now this is fungus. Ah, so we're in the we're actually in the cave system. So we were below the cave system. So this is the cave system, uh, and this is uh, silk and whatnot. There's some water here. Now we're in the cave cavern layers, and so this means that we probably have a long way. We're probably quite far underground, so I'm just gonna keep going up these ramps. And like I said, if you walk towards the pillar, then um, usually you'll go up. And again, I'm here. This is one of those cases where there's no pillars. I don't know where to go. You can't see where to go here, right? You can see a dog is standing here and made me fall over. But I'm, I'm here, and so going up, I want to go to the left. So I want to go to the left. And I'm going to stand up again so that I'm not 
crawling. And again, I want to continue going to the left. This is a pillar, but it's just a pillar. You can see it's also a pillar on this side. So I want to continue going left. And continue going left. And now I want to continue going left. Here, now I want to go straight up. So again, I'm standing here. I want to go up. This is, again, one level above, and I, this is the ramp that I'm standing on. This is where I want to go. Let's keep going up. And you can see here on the, the right, this is empty space. So this is just this is just a big mine shaft um, uh, that they've put this kind of winding ramp around. Now, one of the things that we haven't actually been doing is looking. So we can look at the walls here, and you can see here that this is uh, I guess it's pronounced nice wall or nice maybe it's nice wall. It is a very nice wall. This is a sphalerite pillar, but here you can see this is a sphalerite wall, and you can see that it's got these little pound signs, like the British pound signs, and what that means is that there's a metallic ore here, and that, that metallic ore is sphalerite. If you look up sphalerite, I believe it's an ore of tin. So when we're actually playing the fortress game, we will want to, to mine that. We can't mine in adventure mode, which is fair enough, but um, in fortress mode, that will be kind of interesting. Okay, so we're just going to keep going and again the, the walls have changed we're now into gypsum walls don't know why gypsum is yellow and we just keep going up and we've made it to the top finally and here you will actually find what's called the here this is the trade depot for the fortress and you can see that there are lots of things and one of the nice things about the trade depot is that um, there are, there will be somewhere a, the broker, likely. He won't be here all the time, but they do come around often. So that means you can actually buy anything that's here if you have something to trade for. And I do not have anything to trade for it, so I can't actually buy anything at the moment. Additionally, you will discover that in the left, I've just noticed, and this is, this is a quite a normal feature in in a fortress is there is a tavern here and if we look you can see that there is a throne which is a, a chair there's a table here this is a glass lin and a lin is a musical instrument the all the musical instruments are procedurally generated so in every game the names of the instruments are different and what they do is different so if I just click on here and look at it you can see there's a description of this one I'm not going to go into it because we're running out of time again you see there's barrels here and if I look in the barrels you will see that it is full of alcohol which is very good it's all door now wow, it's all door now you can see these uh, little AEs are not cities they are chests and if we look at them uh, look at you will see that it's full of things so it's mostly full of mugs and so this one and then here you can see these are musical instruments as well. So it's full of musical instruments. So if you want to play a musical instrument, you can play a musical instrument. You can pick one up at the tavern. Um, in fact, you can keep them. That's the Dwarven culture. And when you have people visiting your tavern that you make in your fortress, they will abscond with the musical instruments. This is pretty much guaranteed. And this is almost certainly the tavern keeper. So we can talk with the tavern keeper and we can actually buy ale, we can rent a room for the night. Unfortunately, we have nothing to pay for these things. So we really can't do any of that at the moment. Now I'm going to leave it at that. We have finally escaped from the from the bowels of the earth. And um, next time we're going to search to see if we can't get a companion to join us on our journey. I will see you next time. This has been uh, Uro Oro Niwa. My name is Mike Charlton and I look forward to seeing you next time.